All right, lads, welcome back to another episode of the Shy Top Podcast. We are here for episode 18, back again, keeping the, the consistency going. And I am very pleased to announce that we have our very first guest on the podcast, a good friend of mine and uh, a man who has uh, started delving into the worlds of uh, podcasts and very recently, David Burke. David, how are you doing, mate? Good, Aaron. Yeah, didn't realize during the week I was going to be your first guest on, but delighted yeah, to make you call up. <laughs> it's, a re- it's a really big podcast. honor. It's a really big honor to be the first shy talk guest, I imagine. Yeah, I'll avoid plugging my podcast too much. I might throw one in at the end, or yeah, I'll leave it in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you're involved in a, a you're, invo- you're involved in a couple of podcasts at the minute, aren't you? You have um, obviously your one was it Chats in the Dugout? Is that what it's called? Yeah, so I have Chats in the Dugout, which is obviously a football. Well, not obviously, but it's a football podcast with two mates of mine, and we kind of were planning it anyway. And another mate of mine. Came in, got in touch with me after the Ireland game, the Ireland three games basically, and said, I'm going to start an Irish podca- Irish football podcast. Do you want to kind of join it as a sort of, like I'm not a main person on it. I just kind of jump on it every Floor couple in, weeks yeah. or every three weeks or something. So there's two of them lads. That's Irish Football Weekly. That's all about Irish football in general. So League of Ireland, Irish internationals, uh, Irish women football as well. So a lot of mm. stuff. Bit more serious than Chats and Dugger tries to be funny. <laughs> it might be that funny, but yeah, it tries to be a bit more lighthearted about stuff. Yeah, and, we, um, we, yeah. we try that ourselves over here on Shy Talk. So we do. <laughs> um, Jack- yeah, I was, I was gonna say we're, we're, we're definitely not um, as professional as that, I don't think. No, well, not, the, not. The, the, it's not as if any of us are professional at it or anything. Like, I mean, sure, I jumped into it as well, like last week, two weeks ago. so the Irish Football Weekly, yeah, they they're a bit more serious without being like professionals at any podcast, like first time doing it. But they I wouldn't say take themselves too seriously. It's just that they are taking it very seriously with what they're talking about. I found what we send out like trying to be funny. I think everybody thinks that when you're chatting with your mates, go, oh, we'd be hilarious. Like everybody would love to listen to us on a podcast. And then you go record the first podcast, and you're just stuck there sitting, fuck, <laughs> what? And you're just doing the stuff like, and yeah, I think that. Mm, uh, but yeah, I think I think <laughs> I found last week when I did it for the first time, I said the words I think about two hundred times. Yeah, I mean, we to be sentence, fair, we've had a, we've had a couple of stinkers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was one state, I think it was like two yeah, episodes. That, last two weeks for us, mate, have been rough. <laughs> there yeah. was like two instances, wasn't there, where like both of us had a stinker. Complete- Stingers, yeah, like. like two weeks ago, you were just lost for words at one point. You just like, you were trying I to say something. Brain fire. I just forgot what I was saying, man. I yeah. was just literally looking at the camera dead, like looking at it. And then, was there, was, then there was yeah, last week, I had I a, saying. then there was last week, then I had a, a major voice crack halfway through my fucking sentence. And I wouldn't <laughs> mind, but we were talking about a pretty sensitive subject. So we were talking about the David Dobrik stuff and it was like, yeah, we were getting, <laughs> it was the wrong time it's to have a, a voice crack. Um, yeah. Pretty bad, pretty bad. But you'll get that. You'll get that. You'll get used to it. Um, you, you mentioned there about uh, Irish football, and that was kind of one of the main topics I had down for today. I didn't make videos on any of the Ireland games during the last international break just gone there. You said it would have been, would have been major clickbait, to be honest. Like, yeah, it, I, I, that did go through my mind, to be <laughs> fair. But um, at the same time, I did kind of think, you know what? I've been talking about getting David on the podcast. You know, podcast is usually a good place to to talk about it as well. I've obviously I've heard your thoughts on it on on your own podcast, but uh, overall, Ireland, Stephen Kenny, last international break. What were your thoughts overall? Yeah, disappointing. <laughs> so <I'm a> professional <laughs> football, uh, yeah, we're actually got after that performance, but no, it was really it was really disappointing, and I didn't really agree that a lot of people would say you could take tons of positives, especially from the Serbia game. I wouldn't have been on that line of thought. I don't think it's all down to Kenny either. I think there's a lot of other problems. Um, I don't know if the plan is to go into too much detail anyway. I'm not too pushed about going into too much detail because like like you said, I was talking about it last week. So I kind of yeah, fair, did my yeah. head in over it. But yeah, there's a lot of problems. I think everybody knows that the FAI. So it's not all down to Kenny. There is certain things that are in his hands that he hasn't done well at all. I mean, just managing games, manage the Luxembourg game. Don't 
don't force a style that hasn't been working when you desperately need a win. Go back to just do to go back to basics for that game at least. Just set yourselves up, get that win, and head on into experiment again against Qatar. Um, a lot of people look, were using the thing, oh, he played all the experienced players against Qatar. I should have played them against Luxembourg. But it wasn't as if them experienced players had shown much in the last like, four years. I was just going to say, yeah, it's, it's not as if they're like, gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not as if like you could say, oh, he should have been playing James McLean and Robbie Brady, sure. I didn't even realise this, but one lad mentioned Robbie Brady barely played this year. I knew he barely played, but I think the one of the last times he played, he came on as a sub, came, got taken off after 20 minutes with yeah. Bernie. It kind of <laughs> sums up what his season's been and the likes of, I think Hendrick started that Qatar game as well. Wouldn't want, I wouldn't want Hendricks anywhere near the starting lineup to be honest. Yeah, so. it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a fuck situation though to be quite honest. And a lot of the it's kind of a mixture between players he's trying to bring through young players like the you know your Cullens, your Malombies, who I actually thought, despite the fact that Ireland were so bad over the last international break, for some of the few positives that you know we've mentioned. Um, but like yeah, aging players and just just generally bad players like Hendrick and even, I know, Grievach, obviously, big Preston man yourself, uh, Alan Brown, bit of a stinker. Oh, man, we're, <laughs> we're not going to talk about We're not going to talk about yeah, Alan you Brown. Big Preston oh, fan, eh? Yeah. Preston uh, fan. Listen, all I'll say about Alan Brown is he just, he looks a lot better. Like, I, rem- like, I remember watching him at Preston um, and I, I thought he actually was semi-decent. Uh, and then he came into the international scene and just, What's worrying for me, basically. Yeah, what's worrying for me is that he has been getting played in like the ten, where we're expecting like our creative <laughs> players to be, and it's like, um, but yeah, Grivach is, uh, uh, what, what would you describe it? It's kind of a halftime uh, Preston fan. You're a Man United <laughs> fan. But, uh... Yeah. I'll, I'll, so so basically, so basically, David, back when me and Kelly were in uh, secondary school, um, like this is. What would this have been, mate? This would have been about, what, 2016? 2015, 2016, around that time, yeah. Yeah. So this is when Manchester United were... They're still dog shit. You know, this is is when we were in the the mud, like... um, (laughs) But basically, basically, the team... One of our... I think it was our... We had, like, a sub or something like that, and he was going around asking, like, oh, what teams do you support, lads? Um, Now, Grievach's pride was a bit too, you know, big at the time, so I didn't... I didn't want to say, oh, I'm a United fan, like, you know, so... I literally got hope in the championship and the random number generator and picked Preston. And from then it was kind of a joke I supported Preston. And then it became a bit more a bit more serious. And then, then I got a jersey after they got promoted from like League One to the championship. Uh, and ever since then it's kind of like it's kind of been like the, the team you support, you know. Uh, I, have a, lower leagues. I have a funny one it's a bit different to that, but sort of similar. Like um I don't think I ever told you about this Aaron. All right. Kelly. I didn't realise that's the thing the Nicholas there is, but yeah. Aaron or Kelly, whichever uh, suits. <laughs> yeah. Um you know that team Ren in France. Yeah. Um Rafinha, the Leeds player, came from them last summer and Sarah Wofford. So it's my next door neighbor, he used to live there when he was younger or whatever. And one time just came back, uh, got me a Ren jersey. So I just said, you know, f- very generous, get me a Ren jersey. Yeah. But uh, I said, right, played for- this was like 2014, maybe. I'm trying to remember. I think like FIFA, the football boots be like the Magistas, the yellow. You remember them yellow Magistas, the World oh, Cup? Oh, yes. First, when they first came out. And uh, I was playing, I don't know, I was playing career mode with Ren. And I don't know if he's know the guys, you would see him on the ultimate team. I mean, I haven't played ultimate team in years, but started again this year with uh, COVID. Mexa, Mozambique, he plays with Bordeaux now. This center half, right? Oh, he's not only really, not aware of him off the top of my head, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really, really obscure, right? Really obscure. Um, played that career mode that was that and about three years later the neighbour said I have a friend over in Wren uh, whose son wants to do like an, a, a week exchange kind of come to Ireland learn some English and then I'd go back over and this guy was an absolute like football he, like he was kind of part of one of them supporter groups that are, like the hooligans football hooligan groups for Wren yeah, like fair. live lived and died Wren pure like obsessed with them Obsessed with football in general, I go over and I brought the Ren jersey over me and he takes me into the city. They live outside the city. He takes me into the city. Training ground and stadium is all in the city. Walk on down to the training ground and um, waiting there. This is February. It's freezing cold. We're waiting there. for. Oh, no. Went to the stadium. Got the name Mexair put on the back of the jersey. <laughs> head to the training ground. And then 
we're waiting there first. You know your man there, he's going to be a superstar, Camavinga. I don't know. Is he playing with Rennes? I've, I've yeah. heard of him, yeah. I've, I've heard he's of him. About, anyway, he yeah. His... There's a lot of hype around him. Yeah, he's about, I think he's only 18 maybe, right? And so he was about 16 at this time. And my mate, Brees, goes, his name is Brees. He's going to be an absolute superstar, this guy. And I said, how could you say that about a 15-year-old or 16-year-old kid, that he's going to be like a world, world superstar? And he offered to take a photo, and I said, now you're okay. And I just shook his hand. And so about six months later, he goes on and makes, becomes the youngest France international in about 50 years. Jeez. And then a little bit later, Mexer comes out in his car. go up with the. He thought like it's just a normal kind of fan, take the photo. And I showed him the jersey, gets out of the car, takes a photo with me. Two of us wearing the same pair of shoes. <laughs> and uh, later on, the same pair of Nike Air Forces, later on, Went back, we went back to the house. I said, right, I'm putting this up on Instagram. And I just sent it to him. And next thing you know, he puts it up on his Instagram. And your man and all his mates are going absolutely crazy. I just showed up on one of these uh, Stad Renee players' Instagrams. That is mad. Then they played, like, two days later, their, their Europa, Europa League knockout game against Real Betis. He gets man of the match. And then in the, in the draw for the next round, I'm a major Arsenal fan. Ren get, Ren get Arsenal next round. <laughs> I, want to, I want to go back over. My internet seems to be back now. Touchwood uh, had an absolute stinker there, lads. Typical shy talk, but uh, um, yeah. What I think. What point did you get to in the story? I can't remember. Grieve, I should remember. If it comes to it, that Camavinga turns into like the superstar that is predicted about him. If I fucking didn't get a photo or an autograph of him, an autograph that could be worth. If it was on that red jersey, even though it wasn't his name on the back, that could have been worth something as well. Yeah, like, like what? What, it, what, what age is he now? He's, he's eighteen now, is he? Huh? He's 18 now, is he? I think he's about 18, maybe he's only 17. And when I met him, he was like 15 or 16, came up, shook our hands. And your man, Brees, saying, this guy is going to be... Now, he mightn't develop into an absolute world superstar. He's still so young. Yeah. But, like, there's a high chance he ends up going to a top club next summer, in the summer, like... Yeah, that's a... That's a pretty mad story, to be fair. And that's... So you have kind of like a secret... Uh, not secret, but like a, a second love for, for Ren as a result of that, do you? Yeah, I for, not that I'd forgotten about them, but I'd not been bothered about Ren up until I went over there. And it all sort of felt like another part I didn't even mention. So, well, I mentioned that they had their, their first ever European knockout game, second leg. And I go to one of his mates' house, and they were all 17, I think, bar one of them. So I was the one buying the, the beers in the supermarket <laughs> beforehand. And he bought, he bought, um, he thought, he, when he came over here the week before, he thought, Guinness was unreal. Like Guinness was, I don't really like Guinness. Definitely wouldn't drink it out of a bottle. I'd only get it in a pub on Christmas Eve or something like that, yeah, to be yeah. honest. Maybe Paddy's Day, like occasion. And he bought this like pack of Guinness for him and his mates. I bought this beer, that, like it's kind of like a Desperados, but you don't get it here. It's called Cubanese. So it's like rum flavor beer. It's absolutely horrible. But um, <laughs> it, it's so, I don't know, it's like it has a cult status amongst me and my mates. And we, we go back to your man's house and none of them liked Guinness. Obviously, they weren't going to like Guinness. <laughs> it's fucking hard. Like, for them, it's been such a horrible taste. Not even like that cold of a can, like cans of Guinness either. And um, watch the game. And it was their first ever, like, win in knockout European football history, which was huge. He was absolutely livid that he wasn't allowed to go over to Spain for the game. Even though yeah. I was over there with him, he was really gutted about that. Yeah. Who'd you say they were playing Real Betis, was it? That was Betis and yeah, Real Betis. And then I was still over there when the draw was made for the next round and they got Arsenal. Yeah. And he offered for me to come over. He was able to get an extra ticket if I wanted it, but I couldn't afford to go over again. <laughs> yeah. So that, that would have been unreal, to be honest. Fair. I think this season was their first um, in the Champions, Champions League. League. Yeah, we had the Chelsea yeah, them in their group. And the manager, he was at, they had a, their manager who was in charge of them then, so led them through Europa League to the round of 16 or whatever it was. They won the cup later that, they bet PSG in the cup final later that season. Gee, and Man Mexer scored. Man Mexer scored in his <laughs> last game for Ren. Then left and deleted all his Instagram posts. Like I was saying to Jack, they deleted all his Instagram posts. So one day I was bragging about being on his Instagram and I had looked, I was at this, I was at FAI camp working. And one of the other coaches looks him up and he goes, he's got no posts up here. I said, oh, fuck. But I have the screenshot. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> he's, they won the cup final, then Champions League a couple of years later. But the manager resigned about a month ago because the amount of good players that they just keep selling. Like Rafinha this year. Edward yeah, Mendy. Mendy's another one, yeah, sold him very, at the very end of the transfer window as well, which mm. I can only imagine for a manager is infuriating. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's a bit of a, uh, as you say, a bit of an obscure... Uh, it's a story. random one. It came, to... just came in my head when Jack met, was talking about his Preston story. Yeah, it's point. a bit more obscure than Preston for, for Grievous. I think, I saw I thought Man United played Preston. I thought Man United got knocked out by Preston in like the FA Cup and I thought me and Jack Hayne oh, used to like the no, shit I say, No, but that, that's an interesting story. No, that I think was the weekend of that incident. So when I picked United or when I picked Preston, they were playing United at the weekend. And maybe that was more of a, a yeah, push to support right. Preston. But I, I was supporting United, but I was interested to see how Preston did it. And then United got knocked out and I just remember saying right that's it I'm Preston now fuck yeah. these lot it like, kind of it became a joke that was like it became too far and now your YouTube channel is literally called The True Little yeah. Life so <laughs> this is the thing though like I got I got a question there the other day um, from someone like Jack like why why are you called The True Little Life like, you're named after a flower mate what is that about <laughs> um, and I had to, I had to explain for ages like it's about it's a football club it's what the fans are called and uh, yeah look uh, I look, I, I'd say back when press back in those days, Preston actually weren't too bad. Like Preston had like some Jermaine Beckford, Joe Garner, absolute legend of the game, of went on to think Rangers or somewhere they, like that. Uh, they still have your man Pearson, or has he left them there this year? I think he's still there, but I, I, I'd say he'd probably be looking for a move given the form this season. Like he's, I don't even know what Preston are like this year. To be honest, I wouldn't know. Uh, they're, sh- they're shit. <laughs> I'll really save you the bother. That they're, they're, they're they think. Last season they missed out on playoffs, and then now this season they're like 16th or 15th in the championship. They've, they've just been really poor. Uh, I think they're calling for a manager, like a manager change. I think Alex Neal is their manager. Um, oh yeah, they're calling for a change there. Yeah, it's it, it's just it's gone horribly wrong at Preston. Yeah, um, I remember actually a couple of seasons ago they were making a, a little push for for the playoffs, and I remember Cleveland <laughs> being like, "Lads, lads, the fucking yeah, thing happened." Like, the dream. I'd say. When Aaron asked me to come on this, I did not think we'd be about 20 minutes in talking about press and no one <laughs> This is what you get, man. This is what you get. You don't expect the unexpected when you come on to the Shy Talk podcast. That's what I got. There's, there's been there's been Champions League football this week, but we're going to take it into the championship and talk about mid table teams. And and I know that. You, you might be familiar with him. I don't think he ever broke in. I don't know him personally, but Aaron, I don't know, Jack, do you ever play? Uh, with Longford's like emerging talent team like Aaron um, no say again mate <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry you know like Aaron he played Kennedy Cup and, and stuff like that with Longford uh, so I was doing the same in Mead but there was a lad the year below Jimmy Corcoran who went and joined Pre- he's a goalkeeper he's at Wexford now but he joined Preston when he was about 16 Never, I don't think he, he obviously didn't break through but fun fact about him, I don't know if you remember, there was an Ireland under 17. There was a Euro under 17 about three years ago. And he, in a really weird way, not a weird way, but just so ran, not random, rare. He was, in, he was in goals, obviously, penalty shootout. He'd been on a yellow. He got, I don't know if you remember this, got a second yellow for coming off his line to save a penalty. Oh and the ref God. sent him off during the penalty shootout. Jesus and then Christ. Irish sent a half. Irish sent a half that they had to go and go for the rest of the penalty shootout. <laughs> Jeez. So they, oh my god! No more You'd be subs sick of- left. You can actually make a sub during a penalty shootout for a goalkeeper. I never knew that either, but they didn't have any subs Jeez. left. I remember. Uh, yeah, I never knew that either. Actually, that you can make that substitute during the, the shootout either. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't. I'm not sure how, what's the ruling around it, but I think it, there was a thing they said you could sub a goalkeeper, but they just didn't do it or they didn't have the sub left. Yeah, I remember the World Stick Cup for. I remember the World Cup for Holland. I don't think they made the sub during the shootout, but I think they made like just before the penalty shootout. They brought on Tim Krul for <laughs> Sillison, I think, or something like that. And he came on and he saved like two or three penalties in the shootout and Holland went through against Costa Rica, I think. He was, was given mad. the, yeah, it was a pure mind game thing, sure. Well, Sillison, I remember this. Sillison hadn't saved the penalty in his career at that point. I don't know if he has since, probably has. And Krul's rate was like only marginally higher but I think it was just a pure like mind games we'll make yeah. the keeper sub and that was just freak team freak the team out and then Krill was giving them all like all that during the, yeah, during the yeah. every time a player was taken he was right up in his face yeah 
You know what about penalties? I absolutely love when a player would uh, just kick the penalty spot, <laughs> duff oh, it up yeah. just before the penalty's about to be taken. Proper shit house. Like it's the peak of shit house. Peak of shit house. Yeah, you love to see that though. At the same time, it's uh, if you did that on our pitch, Jack. If you did that in Kina, you wouldn't have a penalty spot anymore. You just have a hole. Nah, in the ground. you'd have a you'd have a crater, mate. If we did that, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'd just dig up. I'd love to see that kind of shit house and Aaron Kelly football videos from now on, to be quite honest. Just like if someone's going to have to take a penalty to win the goal recreations episode and you just fucking dig the shit out of the fucking penalty spot or something. That'd be unreal. Um, I love I've, never seen, playing. I've never seen it work. I think it was Ivanovic, Chelsea, used, did it once and it worked. Like yeah. You man slipped and skied it over the bar afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It was a similar one with Harry Kane, I think, as well. Uh, I wanted to, This wasn't actually part of the plan, but uh, I want to bring up what what's the name of your man? Is it Mexair? You said from Ren. Yeah, Mexair. Yeah, at Bordeaux now with Kishenli a and a half. It just kind yeah, of it, it kind of jogged a question for me, right? And I asked this to the two of you: Have you ever, maybe apart from Mexair, have you ever had any um, interactions with Premier League? So we'll, we'll say Premier League footballers or professional footballers. Any interactions at all? Well, yeah. Um, Both present and past, or whatever. Well, I this isn't like a major interaction, but um, just I was doing work experience at the FAI when I was in TY, and it was during the time of international weeks. So Ireland were playing like Georgia at home, and I was in Abbottstown, which is where all the sport yeah. bodies are and the, the training pitches are. So I was there, and one of the lads just said, You want to go out and watch them train? So I went out to watch them train. Jeez. A couple of times during the week, saw this is a crazy one. Saw Paul McShane score an overhead kick, and Paul McShane in 2016. Paul Mac, this was 2016. Paul McShane was still in the Irish setup oh. in 2016. Jesus, that's and, a bit. And then, what was I going to say? Met so I got photos with a good few of them, just like selfies and stuff like that. Randolph, Christy, McLean, Hulahan was there still as well. So yeah, but that's about it as far as interactions with Premier League footballers. What about you, Grievach? Um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the only, the only, the closest I've ever got, I don't know if you remember this, Kelly, but again, back in secondary school, when Joe Garner was sold from Preston North End, yeah. um, we DM'd Preston North End on Instagram. Just oh, yes. Absolute abuse. We, we sent them a massive paragraph, just roaring abuse, thinking that, like, you know, they replied to us. Uh, and I never did. So that's that's the closest I've ever gotten. Um, <laughs> and I'm surprised you didn't get blocked for it. Actually, to be honest, because like it was like a it was like a strongly worded letter, but like you rinsed them for it as well. Like so, you know, not to brag anymore, but I have actually still while the posts were deleted, I still have the the message chats from your man Mexer during that week. Oh, oh my man! Just thinking about it, right? Um, I'll start, I have awesome. one of my I'll read them out there's not much like to be fair and it's fairly standard stuff and eventually he just gave up and he said like he obviously just said right not responding to him now <laughs> um, aired so right I sent him a message thank you for the photo Max there this is like this is another part I don't really bother adding in but my phone when I was over there it's freezing cold no one phones their battery just shoots down mm. My phone was sat on 2% for like the two hours we were waiting outside the training ground to get a photo. Oh, so if it had died, I would have would have lost the photo. Sent him the photo. And then I said the next night, he I sent him the photo. He posted it on his Instagram. And then the next night said, congratulations, what a game. And he sent me back a reply, just like that praying emoji and a, and a piece. Yeah. And then I tried again, saying huge win when they bet Arsenal, and he didn't reply. But I think he actually even commented under the, the post on my Instagram. One last, like, this is the last of it now with Mexair, but hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you're, he's commented under my Instagram post. Same thing. Oh, love heart and a, and a praise emoji on the under the thing. Oh, and like, in the comment. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty sick, actually, to be fair. You've got a footballer, like, commenting and all that stuff underneath Instagram posts. I mean, that is... There's you know, the class. photo, anyway. That's absolutely same. elite. You won't yeah. see the shoes, but the same same like your Air Forces as well. <laughs> see it if you see the photo, like, on, in your phone. But I said, Aaron, uh, I said that during it, I said, if you want to just launch it, throw the photo up. If the story yeah, got cut do. out, you can throw the photo up and uh, bang on, anyway. Yeah, I'll <laughs> throw it up. Um, 
if you, if you follow me on Instagram, which obviously the two of you do, um, you you may have seen it wasn't obviously last year. It might be in twenty nineteen. There was uh, under seventeen or under eighteen internationals, Euro European internationals yeah. happening, yeah. and there was a match on in Longford. In, they hosted it. Hosted a few games. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. And we went to see Iceland playing either Italy or France or someone like that. And uh, Eider Good Johnson was in the crowd in Longford because his, so, his son was playing. And I just went up to him. He was like sitting kind of in the main stand there, like in the middle, pretty high up. I just went up to him and went, I was like, uh, Eider, I'm a, a massive Chelsea fan. Can, can I get a picture? And he was like, oh, yeah, that's cool, okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty mad one, especially like considering where I met him as well, like in Longford. <laughs> Either good job. Imagine, that, Longford. imagine we had to drag him down to Longford, man. Like he's come down to Longford oh, to watch his son play Iceland. That's crazy to me. Yeah, it was pretty Ireland wild. fucking had a miserable one run in that tournament. Actually, they crashed out group stage, host nation crashing out. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not really a surprise at this point, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoy. I remember enjoying watching that tournament. The, that was, I think, twenty nineteen. Watching the Euros, the underage Euros, like international football is the best. I love watching it. Yeah, international tournaments is the best. It's very fun. I am looking forward to the Euros now this summer. So it's, great, it's great for me as well because there's, there's a lot of content in that because like, there's matches nearly like every other day. And you know, I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking. Even don't know if you just would be up for it, but even like a kind of almost not a daily pod, but every even two days pod of like. Mm. coverage on what's been happening Doesn't yeah be definitely long, that's an idea i was thinking of doing yeah like that's I love, love that, the major terms. yeah that's that's what's so great about them the fact that there is games so frequently like i'd, I'd definitely be up for that anyway like i remember the, the the last world cup i was only a year on youtube and i was nearly uploading that summer like every nearly nearly every day like it was every not every day every other day and it's it's um it's really it really is great I, I, i'm looking forward to the euros now i have to say it's just a shame that Ireland won't be there, but uh, <laughs> is it a shame? Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you just with Ireland, it's just a case of you know, you just enjoy being there. You know, you don't expect them to do anything. Whereas like Euro twenty sixteen really blew everybody's expectations out. That of the was water. amazing. Where were you? Do you remember where you were for the Robbie Brady goal? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was just in my sitting room. In the honest. sitting room, just jumping around. I was, I actually, I was at, um, I just finished, that was my junior night, so we had literally just finished our junior cert that day. Oh, and, man. Uh, we went out to Holy the shit. rights venue, and they had it up. We were wondering if they'd have the match up in the rights venue. They had a couple of screens and a big screen at one of the bars that you couldn't get, like, drink because it was underage. You just get a water or something there, maybe a Coke, and... The match just up on a big screen and watching it, and Robbie Brady scored, and the place went absolutely mental. Fucking, I'd say absolutely. <laughs> it froze, beer it froze for the last like froze for the last four minutes. Then on on screen, you couldn't you oh, couldn't find man. you couldn't um couldn't see how it was going to end, and you couldn't get signal in there either. But ah, it was amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. That and Wes Hulahan's goal against Sweden as well was a massive one as well, oh, and it was a great crazy. finish as well. Well, oh, Wesley was some baller. Wesley was some baller. I just, just to make that plug on Irish Football Weekly every week. I'm not on every week, but uh, there is a Wes Houlihan's top 10 power ranking Irish best of the week. <laughs> well, there you currently, go. That's... Currently in that top 10 in different positions is James Collins, the the absolute um, specimen James Collins, <laughs> Cyrus Christie, and uh, there's... um. Who was, I guess, Aidan McGeady. Aidan McGeady is in there at the moment as Aiden well. McGeady. In top five, too. Have any of you seen, actually, on TikTok, Spartak Moscow are going mad at the minute. With yeah, the, I, the I Aiden, did see that, actually. The yeah. Aidan McGeady propaganda. Like, they're just posting videos of, like, oh, players that create their own move or their own piece of skill. And it's just Aidan McGeady. And, like, McGeady. they, they ruined Juan Bissaka for that. Oh, they did, yeah, actually. That was pretty fucking elite. <laughs> they ruined him. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty elite. But Aidan McGeady, though, like, it felt like his best years were probably when he was at Spartak Moscow to be honest it just feels that way it, yeah I well <laughs> to be fair like which one of us can say that we watched Aidan McGeady week in week out at Spartak <laughs> no, <one> me. <laughs> not me to be fair um, it is it is funny like he's his stats at the moment are incredible he's something like 15 assists since December yeah uh, I know it's champion or not even championships league one I always got laughed I don't know if you've seen that Sunday Until I Die show on Netflix but in yeah. the first season, 
Uh, the underage, one of the underage teams that fire in the senior squad with snowballs. <laughs> he got really <laughs> pissed off about it. Yeah. He was really angry about the the whole thing. <laughs> he was living. Uh, that, that's that's an elite. That's an elite series. That is that's class. The second season, your man is the absolute. That guy is an absolute star. I think his name's Charlie. The manager or something like that, is it? Uh, uh, no, I mean the. He was like he wasn't the owner. He was the owner's sort of go-to guy he was the other guy in charge but he didn't own it and um he's like we need to change the music i want i beat oh, yeah. we need to change the music i want i beat the music yeah <laughs> when the players are coming he's like, he's there just bopping to himself in front of everyone <laughs> like, and, uh, awkward silence and there was sort of great one that when they got to the johnston pate final trophy and they were talking about what they could do with tickets and stuff like that one of the people working there goes we could reward fans for their loyalty and give certain fans who've been to like every game 50% off a ticket price or something first first choice and he goes that's a great idea but where are you going to get money of that back can we go back to my ideas now? he's just like <laughs> completely rubbish though I'd say so love the idea was- but I want to make money let's get back yeah. to mine <laughs> he, like, he, he was such it. a dick to be fair to him like and he, was was he was actually brilliant in it. Uh, he was really good I loved him I think his name was Charlie but I'm not, I'm not certain yeah. Uh, both, to be fair, <laughs> both of the main characters were um, the two. Was it the owner and the chairman? It was interesting, like seeing what they were like, you know, because you never really hear anything about them other from that. In uh, it's, the... it's sold out now, I think the the owner finally sold it or sold a good chunk of it to like a twenty three year old. Twenty three year old owns, owns Sunderland at the moment. Grievat, you mentioned um, Champions League, so we'll probably move on to to that next. Ooh, I think. Seeing as though we have an Arsenal and United fan in on the pod today, <laughs> we might have to talk a bit about Europa League as well. Um, but first in Champions League, what did you make of the uh, of the first legs overall? I've made my video on it, so if anyone has seen that, then you'll know what I think. But um, yeah, overall, who who are we saying is going to go through to the semis? Um, I'd say. On my podcast last week, I just give myself a bit of credit. I predicted PSG to win 3 1 or 3 2. Oh, in that, there in we that go. First leg. <laughs> and um, so I was right. And, and now I think Bayern will probably actually go through in the second leg. We'll turn it around. I think Real will hold on. Liverpool might push them. I think Real are going to hold on. City will, pro- will, will see off Dortmund. Granted, Dortmund could produce something special, but I think City. Uh, well, they're going to be, they have a bit more cop on about them maybe this year than they have in the last three years in European football. Hmm. Just ba- I don't know for certain, just based off how they've been in the league, they've been a lot more like controlling, managing games better than maybe they have in the past. And the last one, yeah, Chelsea, obviously, I think this stage they're going through. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of um, that shot? Yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I, I fully agree with what David just said. Um, the, yeah, like you say, with um, Paris Saint Germain, I did think um, the likes of Neymar and Mbappe they would get a few, um, but a couple of goals Bayern got were will probably prove to be critical, and I'd say they they will turn it around and they learn from the goals they conceded. Uh, obviously, Kelly with Chelsea, I don't, I think you were you were fairly delighted with the performance. Well, not with fair, the performance. Kelly, actually, <laughs> out, out of interest, it, it wasn't great, though, was it? No, it was. It was, it was actually. It was actually, I thought Chelsea were very, very bad. And I've seen a lot of people give them a lot of credit. And I was like, like Porto actually dominated the game. And whenever Chelsea did get it, it was very much a case of... The, fir- oh, the first 20 minutes of that game, were, Porto were like looking like the ones to, to score, weren't they? Or, yeah, they were looking very, very good. in favour of them. I, yeah. don't think it, I don't think that like performance, they might have... I, didn't, I haven't even seen the highlights of that game. But I would just say, in European football especially, if I was a fan... I do not care how the fuck we would win a, a quarterfinal game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. 100% win it and the clean sheet, 2-0, two 2-goal two lead. That's just all you need at the end of the day. It doesn't like That's the difference. PSG won 3-2, but 3-2, it, even it's three away goals, it's not a huge lead. And based on how Bayern were playing, they just need to take one of them extra chances. They create so many chances. And PSG would need to take all the chances they created, which they didn't create much of, they were just clinical last night, or not last night, but a couple of nights ago. 
Yeah, like, what's the story with Lewandowski? Is he meant to be back for the second leg? I don't know what the story is with don't him. Don't know. Don't know when he. I don't know what even injury he has or how far away yeah, he's going to be. Like, that, when that could back. prove crucial. That could prove if crucial. If he is back, if he is back, I would double up on on Bayern to turn it around. Definitely. I think the um, other two games, are, um, not four. Got sorry, the other two games are Liverpool and City. So yeah, what do you reckon now on that one? Um. Like Liverpool, Liverpool were very, very poor. A uh, lot of really, really bad mistakes. First, but even like overall performance, they were shocking. Like first ten minutes of the second half, they came out and showed a bit of intent. I think if 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 I can see it going much the same in the second leg, I think Liverpool ha- always seem to have that something extra when it comes to um, big European nights. Like we've seen it with Barcelona a couple of seasons ago. There was obviously. Uh, Istanbul that everybody still talks about 2005 but um, I don't know if this team especially the way they've been playing this season um, and at home as well I don't think they can turn this one around but they could prove me wrong they've proved me wrong multiple times in the past but um, I was quite impressed with Real Madrid actually I kind of in my video leading up to the quarterfinals I kind of I downplayed them a lot Um I just didn't think they were the same force. And I still don't think they are the same force as they were a couple of seasons ago. But like some of the goals, like particularly that first goal that they got the other night, the first finishes one, like the pass from Tony Kroos was absolutely ridiculous. Like they still have quality players in there. And I, I do think they'll see it through. And I think City, I think I agree with you there. I think City should see it through as well. Um, the only worry for them is, according to my younger brother, Josh, who's a City fan who watched the game, the rest of us were watching the Liverpool game on the night. He says Haaland was very quiet and that's like he might still have that little bit extra in him for the second leg. But Dortmund were absolutely robbed on the night, obviously, with the Bellingham. Bellingham one, that was really harsh. Yeah, I was going to bring it up as well, lads. What, what was your opinion on that? Do you think it's it's the case now? I we, Like I was chatting to a mate of mine about this um, and it was the topic was like, you know, goalkeepers getting like special treatment from referees that if there's any kind of contact made on them now, it, it seems... You know, it's 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 deemed a, a foul straight away. When even when you can see from the angles, Bellingham's beating him to the ball, and Emirates he's actually kicked um, Bellingham anyway, trying to get. It. So, what what was your opinion on that? Do you think that goalkeepers, unlike maybe you wait for need to start looking at the the challenges on goalkeepers a bit more in depth, or do you think? I think it was a bad one from the ref. To- on just in the isolated instance because they have VAR he shouldn't have blown it because if he didn't blow it VAR could overrule it anyway mm. because it, they'd say if it was a foul or not lead, in the lead up to the goal because he blew it that's an issue I think you could be right that there's I referee myself obviously not at a high level but in, in schoolboy football and you would get a bit of potential panic especially in, like if you've in such a high profile game there'd be that bit of panic of going oh fuck He's about to. This is a major point in the game, so he has to hold his bottle, and he probably panicked, like rushed that, and and especially because it's a keeper one. Usually, if it's involving a keeper, it's a goal or not a goal kind of thing. Or it's obviously going to be a major turning point in the game. So he, I think he panicked a bit on that one. Uh, in general, yeah, I, it could be true that it's. I think it will be more common that mistakes might be made around goalkeeping decisions. Goalkeepers not getting. The same punishment as well as outfield players at times is another one with certain tackles. I mean, like last yeah, during yeah. this season, the Van the Pickford on Van Dyke, like, that was a horrible tackle and just like overlooked yeah, yeah. as an attempt to save a ball. But so, the, that's yeah. that's the thing, like you know, there's a point where you have to kind of look at it and say, you know, you have to kind of take him being a keeper out of it and look at what he's done and what he's going through. Like if that's an outfield player, yeah, that's what from- that's what we we're. Told, um, I was doing a course like a it's sort of like a seminar thing actually, only a few weeks ago. Where uh, the guy giving it was saying, You gotta forget about as a referee, you have to forget about what was the intention. So, you know, you say, Oh, he intended to make a save or he intended to get the ball, uh, and you have to go with what's actually happened on the pitch. So, <laughs> and I think referees would tend to, with the, well, not in that instance, the Dortmund one that was a bit different, but like referees would tend to move on very quickly from a goalkeeper doing something like what Pickford had done. But not because that's a little bit different, but yeah. Like if that was the tackle from an outfield player in the Pickford one, it was a goal. It was a penalty. Um, and the other thing I would say about 
the Dortmund one that the other night is if it was the other way around and it was City clean through, would he blow up as quick? I don't know. <laughs> like you don't know. <laughs> it could just be the inf- like you know that influence of City as opposed to the influence of Dortmund. You just never know. Pep Guardiola would be that thirty eight year old Dortmund manager. Mm. Yeah, that could definitely be a factor for sure. Um, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I, I, I genuinely do think not only in incidents like this, but in, incidents where balls are coming into the box from corners and stuff, and keepers are coming out, and there might get a little nudge. You know, I do think there's definitely an element of special treatment there for goalkeepers, and I think overall there's an element of special treatment for defenders these days. Now, when the box when the ball comes into the box, like I seen, I don't. I don't want to make excuses for Chelsea losing 5-2 to West Brom the weekend because this, <laughs> this is not what this is right here, okay? But there's one incident where Chelsea have a corner, swing the ball into the box. Somebody, I think it might have been, um, oh, what's his name, Kyle Bartley, throws himself on the ground and just gets a free out. And it was like, lit. I don't know where the contact was from anyone. Do you know what I mean? I think that's just a general thing now where they're just, if there's anything dodgy like that, they're very quick to blow. And like David was saying about the, you know, VAR not being allowed to look at it after the referee blows his whistle. They need to fucking calm down basically with blowing That's the a, whistle. That one is, yeah, that, that whistle one's a bit rubbish in terms of he's blowing his whistle as the ball's on its way into the net because there's nobody who can affect that ball. It's the same with the free kick that a few weeks ago, the dunk one. He's blowing his whistle while everybody's still in action. It's a little bit different to the ref is blown was still on the halfway line and everybody has stopped thinking the game's off and then a guy runs you know runs on in and shoots that's yeah that the whistle shouldn't count as a reason the goal would be disallowed when there's literally nobody can affect the play after the, once the whistle was blown um i'm actually really sorry that cuz i have to go fucking pick up my sister now she was gone to do this uh, fucking interview yoke and i have to get her Oh, that's no uh, worry, man. No worries, man. I yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to come on any time again. In, yeah, well, in... like we can obviously, hopefully, sh- shortly, we'll be able to meet up in person and yeah, you know, and we can do the, the cool fucking goal recreations, Premier League ones. Exactly. Yeah. Have. So <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, this Jack? summer we'll. Was that you, Jack? On one of the recent ones, or was it your brother Aaron, who was absolutely whoa? <laughs> you had well, a few, it, like you won yeah. like seven or eleven nil. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was my brother Josh. Yeah, it was. Grieve, I'll put it. I'll put it this way, David. You'll see what yourself when you come down and watch me take a few shots. I'll bring my own. I'll bring my own football. Pump them up. <laughs> yeah. and have my own self. <laughs> Yeah. All right. well, well, I was only thinking about it to myself. If I do them, I'm a lefty. So sometimes with some of the shots, I just have it for the whip. When you say you're purling one around, either I'm hitting it with the right foot or I'm going uh, gonna switch over to the other side of the pitch. But yeah, yeah. I, was the same. I can't do the, the. I know you're doing a QA part as well, but. Yeah, that's great, mate. That's no worries. Well, right, we'll, we'll have you on again. Thanks a lot, right. David. Man, David. No nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Talk soon. Yeah. All the rest. All right. Well, well that- that was David Burke, lads, uh, our very first <laughs> Shy Talk guest. I didn't realise he'd be leaving, but uh, it's okay. We're all good. We, uh, we how, long we, how, long we, how long have we been going for now, Grievach? Um, Well, we started a quarter past, and I think, like, probably, what, about a five-minute delay with... My shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, probably just coming up to the hour now, I'd say. Just coming up to the hour, okay. Well, I have got... Uh, as David was saying there, we have a Q&A section of the pod now. We got quite a few questions in, and a lot of them are quite hypothetical ones, um, which, okay. are, which are good for, you know, um, sparking debates. Let's get into some Questiano Ronaldo's. Uh, don't know why I said that. Uh, <laughs> don't know why I said it like that. Um, let me see. Oh, wow, there's actually some... There's a... There's actually some pretty deep ones in here, not gonna lie. Let me see. Oh um, shit, man. Okay, right. Mr. Grievach, what is your greatest success to date? Wow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> my god. Um my greatest success to date. Um fucking spin of water over me, so fuck's sake, man. This is a difficult one because it <sighs> I, I would say, I would like to think, uh, this, just, this, this may come as a loophole, myself and Kelly, uh, I don't know about you, mate, but I'd like to think that at the age of 21, I haven't had my greatest success yet. 
would yeah. would would you agree on that? Yeah, I w- I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I can give you something that was a big deal for me and that meant a lot to me to do. It was the time. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll just say the time that I got to physio with um, our local senior team. So the mm-hmm. the county we live in, I like you know that I got to physio or system physio. Um, with them and I got to do like run-ons and stuff like that and go out and treat players and stuff like that. Uh, I actually remember <laughs> someone saying that uh, during the commentary, they were pr- the, the commentator or one of the radio commentators was praising about how quick <laughs> I was running out <laughs> to, to treat them. And he thought that, you know, I was, um, I was a player standing in as a run-on physical, like, cause I was, <laughs> like I was young and I was quick. Like, so yeah, the place. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that that probably was sick, and I got to do it in um in away games as well. Uh, this is uh, this was in 2019, um, and I got to go to these stadiums when like fans were allowed in and stuff like that. So people were there, and it was it was a surreal experience. Like, cause I've I've never played in any kind of semi professional or professional level. So for me to go on the bus uh, with a team, uh, travel and experience, which is something I want to do in a job, like um, it it was sick. Like. Um, yeah, and then from that, I actually the, the person who was doing the work experience with the physio uh, was telling me that a lot of other teams uh, wanted my contact information for inquiring to see if I was available. So oh, that was wow. a pretty surreal experience for me. So that that I'd say is my my best achievement to date so far. But I don't want it to be. It won't be my greatest. No, I, I like that mindset. <laughs> I like the mindset. That's good. That's good. Um, um, have you got any yourself, Kelly, or would you? Um, do you, do you opt for the I haven't hit it yet? I'd like to think I haven't hit it yet, but for going like so far in life, um, yeah. I'd probably say surviving this far. I know. Um, <laughs> see, uh, we got, um, I think maybe winning my All Ireland medal when I was 12, maybe I think that might be the best. The, the, the community games basically, as if you didn't know, when I was under 12, we. For for some reason in community games, when you finish fourth, you can you get a medal at all Ireland level for, for whatever reason. But we finished we finished fourth. I remember I was like I was never an athlete like at at all like up until I was like twelve, and this was like the the the, the kickoff point sort of thing for me. And yeah, I got I got really into it. We trained and trained and trained all that summer. Then August came around, we ran, got to the final, and then I seen we finished fourth. And I remember just being absolutely like. Fuck, I'm gutted. Like we've we we fucked it. Like just yeah, like, yeah, and the final, and then our guy who was running our last leg after the race finished, he just ran over and jumped on me, and I was like, "What the f- what the fuck are you doing, man? We just finished fourth. <laughs> and he was like, "No, no, fourth gets a medal. Fourth gets a medal." And I was like, "Oh my fucking god, that's insane!" <laughs> and I remember just being absolutely fucking ecstatic, mate. Absolutely ecstatic. Yeah, that would have so. been surreal, man. Jeez, yeah, like you say. Yeah, I think probably that. Um, it's probably a matchup between that and being able to play underage league of Ireland football for a year with Longford Town, or maybe going to the Kennedy Cup as well. Maybe I don't know. I'd probably say the running. I'd probably say winning that medal. Um, to be fair, <laughs> but like you, I'd like to think the greatest moment hasn't come yet. Uh, yeah, it, it might. It might be a dummy way of getting out of answering the question, but like realistically, boys, we're we're twenty one. Like you know, we're young, yeah, we're young. <laughs> we have a lot of life left to live. We would hope we haven't hit our peak yet. We're 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 still going for for top spots. Here's a follow on question from that though. All right, what would that moment be in your mind right now? The greatest achievement that I can get right now. Yeah, in your mind, what would it be? All right, so the greatest achievement I get, I probably have two. Uh, one would obviously to be. Like if you and me proper blew up on YouTube and we could do like these mad shoots that like um yeah. you know Simon level, Chris M D level kind of stuff that we've always like talked about doing and wanting to do um more of that would just be sick to be able to say that we could do YouTube for a proper career. Like um if that didn't if that you know if that was one, the other one I would go with was I my my best achievement that I want to get is a, a physio at, or like a working with a physio team at a top level, either Premier League club or some top level club 
that's where I want to go. Just the, the feeling of being able to, like, like I got with the, the work experience, of going with a team, going to a stadium, um, and just feeling, getting that experience. And that's my job, uh, you know, week in, week out. I just think that'd be sick, mate. That <laughs> there would be probably my two uh, if I could get it. What would what would be yours, mate? Yeah, I like that, man. I like that. I like the, I like the, <laughs> I, like the I like the excitement in your voice when you say it as well. That's that's yeah, uh, that's <laughs> it's wholesome, mate. It's wholesome. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I agree with yeah. I mean, if we if we were to properly blow up and make YouTube our job, like pff, man, I, I don't think there's anything I'd want to do more on this world to be quite honest with you yeah um, yeah that that would be the absolute dream um apart from that i guess in it's it seems very unlikely at this point but like i am still young as well like we you just said we are we are in 21 like maybe winning a medal at senior national level oh shit in, in athletics I think that would be that would be a pretty mad moment for me to be quite honest with you. Um, obviously, I've, you know, I've yeah. Last year was my first year running at senior level, and if there were there were those videos I sent to you uh, for your yeah, yeah yeah your project that time. That, that, my first year running at senior level, and I didn't look or feel out of place, which is like the one thing that I was a little bit worried about. I'm about to get absolutely shot on here, but uh, <laughs> luckily I didn't. And um, like the, the 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 guy who won the two hundred meters. Um, I'd, I'm pretty sure he's in like his mid twenties, mid to late twenties, maybe. I could be wrong there. So there's still time, boys. There's still time. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> um, like exactly, exactly like that. The, the main point being that is that me and Kelly are 21. Like, they, like well, we've just both said like there is stuff we want to achieve. Like, as much as we would like to answer the question like the greatest achievement right now, we basically we probably don't have it yet. But you know, like you say, Kelly, we're still young. We're still working for us, uh, and there's plenty of time to, to get that sword. Exactly, we're gonna smash it. We're gonna smash it. <laughs> um, let me see. Okay, okay, this is a good one. If you could celebrate only, if you could only celebrate one holiday each year, which one would you choose? So you have to uh, eliminate every single other one apart from this one. Yeah. Um, the obvious one is Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, mate. I just literally I went through them in my head, and the only other one that came to mind was New Year's. But it's just it just isn't the same. Like it's Christmas is a full day. New Year's Eve is like you're just sitting waiting. Like obviously the crack and the party and all that stuff would be good, but nah, for me it's it's gotta be Christmas. Like you, you just cannot be the whole day is just class to me. I really really enjoy Christmas. I know there's some people who don't enjoy Christmas as much, but for me personally. Christmas, hundred percent, all the way. Yeah, especially in years gone by as well, when we could actually meet up with family members as well. Um, <laughs> but ho- hopefully this year that'll be coming back. But yeah, I'd have to agree. Uh, Christmas is uh, the elite holiday in the year. Um, speaking of which, actually, we just had Easter. Did you did you get up to anything wild or wonderful during? <laughs> I mean, what what do you do during Easter? Like, <laughs> yeah. You go to mass, you eat a bit of chalky. And that's about it, really. Go to bed. A bit, <laughs> bit of lamb. That's actually... I had a bit of lamb. That's what I had. Oh, uh, lovely. <laughs> pushed the ball out. I had a bit of lamb. Oh. Uh, that's actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually managed to have... Um, I, I just, just before this call, I went on... A, I had a running session to do. And I came back and I had a nice little pre-meal of uh, lamb curry with a bit of veggie in it. And it was... Oh. It was, it was top tier, I have to say. I was a bit concerned that I might have to start eating it on the record and then <laughs> get rinsed for it. We get our first guest so, on and Grievo to just scranning a bit of curry. Munching away on a lamb curry. Like. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said anything. I, I, if anything, I'd be like, fair play, you know? Fair, fair yeah. fucking play. Just, just a side note to that, Kelly. Um, this is totally irrelevant, but it might be a, a bit bountiful. I also had a packet of crisps um oh, yeah? with this. Would you like to guess what crisps I had? They're fucking definitely McCoys, aren't they? Don't so- know if you can see that, mate. <laughs> Get out! Get him out of here! <laughs> and no do you know way. what, mate? I was gonna bring this up in the podcast if, if we were, you know, if we wanted just to bring up another side note. So for anyone who doesn't know, boys, um, I don't know if it actually was on this channel or was it on your channel we did the tier was list. That, I think it was on my channel. I should have put it yeah, on Shy Talk. We, we we did a tier list. Myself, Danny, and Aaron did a tier list on Chris one of the days. 
Um, and there was a heavy debate about where snacks fit on that list. So snacks, obviously, if you don't know, lads, are made by Tato. They're, they're cheese and onion flavour, and they're kind of like wafer crisps. They're not really... They're not really crisps. And I was very defensive. It's another I said they were very good, uh, but they should definitely not be in the bin. The boys adamant that they should be in the bin. And I would like to say, upon review of having them, they're a little bit shit. <laughs> <I can't lie. laughs> they're shit. They're, they're shit. They're, they're a little bit shit. I had, I, took, I had one and I was like, that's not cheese and onion. <laughs> that is cardboard shitty cooking. that it just it just like to be fair like i would say this like they're not bad like for a crisp like I, I for me personally if i was given them you know i wouldn't i wouldn't you know get sick but they're definitely not great but they're on the same they were... level they're on the same level as chickadees like, they're pretty yeah, much made yeah. the same by the same you know, company yeah, I, I think we said this as well during the tier list that it was you it was the crisp you got when you were you know, you went to a birthday and you got like a little um, a mixed bag. And if you got snacks or chickadees, you know, you were happier because you're a child and just ate shite all day. Whereas nowadays, if if someone gives me a packet of snacks, I probably would be a bit disappointed. <laughs> that, that, that's the understatement of the evening, to be quite honest with you. Now. <laughs> um, I was actually, that brings up a bit of a, uh, a question I was going to ask. Yeah. Uh, the the there's this podcast I watch. I actually made a video with them uh, in Brother Words. Robbie and Tommy, remember I did the Irish slang video oh, with them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Their podcast is in Brother Words, and they did a a tier list on chocolate. Okay, right, which okay. we haven't done. But what they did was they actually bought the chocolate that they were eating in the video and tried it on the podcast and then gave their rating. Now, <laughs> there were some absolutely questionable decisions in there. They didn't like fries cream. Yeah, oh. they didn't like fries cream, mate. Stinker. They're, they're, please tell me you like fries cream. It's, it's, it's all right. So fries cream, is that the mint cream chocolate, is it? Kind of, yeah. It's like a, it's, there, there is a mint one, which is the green wrapper, but the normal one is the blue wrapper, and it's dark chocolate, and there's this like cream stuff in the middle, and I don't know what it is, but it's fucking nice. It's like cream egg filling. That time of stuff. Yeah, I put. I mean, like, I have to say, I haven't tried it, but I, I, no, I've heard good. I've good. I've heard good things about. It. I mean, honestly, I, I trust you, mate, because after you put me onto that Kelly or that curry sauce, I, I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. That's a, That's another that's thing. A... That's another thing. The, the chef released this new curry sauce, which you can get in a little squeezy bottle, lads. And they had Paul McGrath on the ad, yeah? <laughs> and you have this stuff on fucking anything, and it's elite. It's elite. It, it is just is fucking elite. I, Kelly, mate, I literally saw... Kelly introduced this to me, and when I tried, I was like, oh, it's, curry, it's curry sauce, and I was like, oh, it's cold, you know, I don't know how it's going to be. Kelly and, and Danny were adamant to me, this is elite, you have to try it. Tried it, fucking class and i literally the second i tried it i went home like we said to mom and dad lads you need to get this sauce thank me later <laughs> once you do and now it's just a regular in this household now it, it's the oh, first I'm thing on the shopping list i'm glad to hear that i'm very <laughs> glad to hear that one thing i, ha I had yes yesterday or the day before right for my lunch absolutely elite dad sometimes makes a fry for lunch yeah oh, nice. and it, we're going off on such a tangent here but it doesn't matter <laughs> it's shy talk we'll roll with it um Right, he, he makes a fry sometimes for lunch and, it, you know, classic rasher sausage uh, pudding and the odd time he'd make, make an old egg, an old fried egg, you know. That would egg. And uh, a few days ago, he made rasher sausages and pudding. I sucked them all into a fucking sandwich, right? Throw on a bit of Paul McGrath curry on top of the fry in the sandwich. Oh, sham. Mate, it was unbelievable. It was Really? <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I'm telling you, it oh goes with everything. God. It goes with everything. Throw it on a chicken I, wrap. Honestly, throw it on your you know sandwich. What, I, I honestly believe you, like, because it, it, I've seen and heard things like it, it. Just, I've never heard a bad review of it. At my 21st, you threw, you threw a, uh, uh, you, you dipped an old Dorito into it, and it, it was like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's this is the thing, right? So explain. So like that, basically, when we went down, when I was there with Kelly, and we were, he was introducing me to saw. Danny and Arm were saying, like, it goes to everything. And Danny was saying, yeah, they were chicken for the rolls and all this kind of stuff. And it was elite. So we having Doritos there. And I was like, everyone was just kind of talking away. So I was like, right, no one's looking. I'll just take a cheeky Dorito. And the second I about to dip it in, everyone turns around to me. What are you goes, doing? <laughs> He's dipping a Dorito in there. 
But um, I have to say, boys, it wasn't the worst now either. It, I tried it. It was actually decent, mate. It was actually decent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you say, mate, it just goes with everything. Okay, first of all, to end that point on the food and the Paul McGrath curry and all that stuff, I think we should definitely do a tier list on chocolate and have it with us and try it on the spot yeah. when uh, when we can, which might just be from next week because from April 12th, you're allowed to uh, go I think, oh. meet, meet everyone outside, <laughs> like outside your house, inside your own county. So the yes. boys can meet up again and do shite talk and do goal recreations and what the good old days. So, <laughs> with, uh, with a bit of luck, lads, this will probably be our last um, Zoom cast for probably until the next lockdown. <laughs> Insert a compilation of the best Zoom cast moments. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> number one, a... Kelly, Kelly disconnects from us. <laughs> number two, Kelly voice crack. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think... we, we did we did go off a bit of a tangent there, but I, look, those things needed to be said. They just needed to be they needed broadcasted. To be said. Um, we are sorry that we did go off on a tangent on that person's question. What um, was the question? I do you know what? I can't even remember, mate. <laughs> Oh my god, what was okay, it even food related? It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Do you know what it was? The question was if you could get rid of one holiday, what would it be? And you went off talking about <laughs> that curry. Oh had... chip shop curry. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking Yeah, smack a bit of curry on Christmas dinner. <laughs> Lads, this is what you get when you watch Shy Talk. Like you don't get this with any other. Po- well, you probably do, but like you... <laughs> no, no one does it like us. You don't get this level of absolute waffle. Um, I'm, I'm glad David got a good uh, got a good uh, taste for it, um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have him on again at some point. But uh, yeah, I think I think the thing about it, like it was unfortunate he did have to leave because it, he missed this section, which probably would have really <laughs> he would have really been exposed to what it's about. Yeah, really. Yeah, we, we just spent the whole time talking about football, and we did talk about a shite in that as well. But this is proper. This is prime <laughs> shite talk area. Um, let me see. Okay, we've got so many questions, and we're not going to get through them all today. I don't think at this point. But we're gonna. I'll, I'll ask a few more. Uh, we're probably we're probably well over the hour at this point. I'm not really too sure based because of our fucking technical difficulties um, <laughs> in the first half. But let me see. Okay, I want to ask a really good one. Um, um, if you could have one superpower, we've 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 done that one before, haven't we? We've done that one. Yeah, yeah. We've definitely done that one. Um, let me see. Um. Oh god, okay. This is a this is a deep one again. Okay. Oh shite. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> if the world ended tomorrow, what would oh. you do on your last day? Fuck me. Actually, do you know what? I know exactly what I do, right? That's so much. I would call I would call you and whoever has who good mates, and I'd get us up on a roof, uh, a cold beer, a couple of lawn chairs. And just say fuck it. This is my. This that, is why. This is why you're my guy. Okay, I literally had the exact same thought. Like yeah, fucking, mate, uh, like Shawshank Redemption type stuff. Yeah. Remember when? Remember when they're up on the fucking thing and the prisoners and the guards are sharing a beer and they're kind of just looking out over a grateful universe, Thanos style. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah, like this is the thing. Like, realistically, like, I, like so many. When I hear this question asked, like, so many people, I think would be like. Oh yeah, I know. I'd, I'd rob a bank, and you know, I just go on a mad spree of whatever the fuck, do whatever the fuck we want, which is fair enough. But in my opinion, like, you know, you're fucked either way. Like, you might as well just enjoy the last bit of life. You know that you're not. This is so. This is so depressing. So morbid. But, <laughs> yeah, you, you you just might as well enjoy the last bit of life. I mean, sitting on a roof or sitting wherever, just like you say, watching the sun, a couple of beers, and just sit back yeah. because like the, we, you know, we, this, we, is the, this is the end like we, we'd be kind of fucked if the weather was the exact same as it is today and you know? we it, it, we wouldn't be sitting out on any roofs if it was absolutely yeah. pissing rain like it is right now <laughs> we'd be getting youtube playing a sunset and just sitting in front of that like <laughs> little green screen <laughs> projecting onto the fucking wall but you know i agree with you just sit down chill out uh have a few beers and reflect <laughs> yeah anymore, anymore. definitely mate uh god can we get a more happy question that'll be that'll be great uh, that is a good question don't get me wrong it's a good question but um let me see um okay i feel like this is gonna be a fairly quick answer are you an introvert or an extrovert i 
do you know what, mate? I would say I'm introverted around a lot of people. I would say that probably yourself and maybe a select few other people, I would come across as extroverted. I would be confident speaking. Um, like, I, I, I don't really like this kind of, because I, I don't really know. You know what I mean? Like, I could say, like, oh, I'm introverted, but everyone else thinks I'm extroverted. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, so it's, yeah. it, it, it's difficult. I would personally say, yeah, I'm introverted. I, I, like, I know my job. I have to, you know, talk and do safety breaks and stuff like that. But that that's fine. But just, yeah, I, I would say introverted a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. And a lot of people are going to be like, oh, but just have a podcast or, Ari, you make, you make fucking videos, man. Of course you're a fucking <laughs> extrovert, man. But like, Usually one of the quietest people in the room. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, time, thinking, you know man, it's, it's different when you're around, you know, certain people. Like, it, yeah. it, it just is different. Like, you know? I feel like that's the same for a lot of people, to be fair. But like, yeah, like it, it's it's so, like, to be fair, like it's easy people saying like you're extroverted when it's you and me on a Zoom call talking to each other when we've known each other almost 10 years now at this stage. Like, you know, yeah, that, that's easy. Like, you know, that, that's not an issue. The, like you get put in a room with say 50 people you don't really know they kind of maybe go even between back and forth a little bit of introvert and extrovert but yeah I, I, that's that's my you know that's what I would say on it yeah like but by the way lads, we don't make videos because we're fucking extroverts we make videos because you enjoy <laughs> it and it's a bit of crack like do you know what I mean exactly, like, exactly like. it's a hobby like um, but yeah I, I'd agree with you I think introverted and depending on the company um extrovert let me see what else have we got um uh what would you do if you won the lottery tomorrow now that's a question that is a question oh, right there's a, there's a couple of things i would like to do um first off i would like to buy my dream car i definitely mm. would buy that um what car are you going for it's got to be an Aston Martin DBS, mate. It's the James Bond car. Oh, yeah. I remember watching it in Casino Royale, and I was just like, that's the car I want. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> um, someday, lads. <laughs> other than that, like, you, you do the you do the standard things. Like, you know, you, 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 you sort your parents out, obviously, and your family. Um, well, actually, I had a discussion with this with another mate of mine. You probably would do a good bit of charitable work as well, or, I, or you'd like to think you would. You know what I yeah, mean? I think yeah, you would, you would. Yeah, um, and then obviously once that is done, you can have your splurge and you know <laughs> buy your six or seven houses wherever the fuck you want, travel the world. That I mean, that's just, just standard things. I don't mean to sound boring when I say it, but it just that's just what I would do. Like you know, when you get, I think when you get given a certain amount of money, you kind of don't know what to do with it. Like every time when you see the figures for like Euro millions and stuff like that, and like. <laughs> How much people could win? You just, you just think to yourself like, what would you do with all that? Like, you know? Yeah, it is. It's a ridiculous amount of money. Like, I have some things that I want to, you know, get done, sort of thing. Um, like for starters, I would completely do up my recording shed outside. It's a like, proper studio. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, well, the first thing that needs to be, it needs to be fucking insulated. The fucking room isn't insulated. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like. Um, I get that done, first of all, and then I would just make it into an absolute, like, top of the range fucking studio, and I'd have I'd I'd get internet out there. I would I'd literally I'd I would make that my fucking second home. Do you know what I mean? It's just like Jeez, right yeah, now, okay. right now, the way it is, like, it is hard to record out there, like, because especially during the winter when it's so. Fucking call it, you know yourself. We mentioned it until dawn series. We were both absolutely freezing because it was like yeah, the, January. The, the jackets were on in those episodes. But they really were. They really were. And then during the summer, it's really fucking hot. But um, yeah, I get that all decked out with everything, and then you'd still have loads of fucking money to do your, you know, charity work or whatever, and um, sort everything out that needs to be sorted out. Um, again, same as you like. I really, I would not know. Not wanting to sound boring, but like I would not know where you'd go from there. Like yeah. I'd, ha- I'd have everything done. <laughs> this is the thing, like I, th- I think this is the thing when like you would win it. Like you, you never really know what you're gonna do with it straight away. Like it, it only comes when you see something. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. like I I win the Euro Millions. I think to myself, right, I do all the stuff that I just said, and I, I wake up tomorrow and I'd be like, 
you know, I want to buy that football team. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, you, you just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, like... Do you know what another that, thing would be good to do? Do you know what another thing would be good to do? Um, oh, I think I know, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to build facilities out here in our in our village. Imagine being yeah, able to fund that, you'd make it unbelievable. Like there'll be there'll be no recording in the farmer's field from now on. <laughs> no, tell you what, Keen United be the next big team. Oh my god, yeah. It's just when you mentioned football team there, I went, Oh shit, yeah, that's I'd do that as well. Um yeah. but yeah, it's kind of it's one of those, it's a tough enough question to answer when you're not in that situation and you're not likely to ever be in that situation like you're just not <laughs> unfortunately yeah but you know we can always hope we can always hope uh you we know can we, dream. we can hope youtube takes off and then maybe you know <laughs> things might start going our way we, we make it big yeah for sure uh right lads i think that's where we are going to wrap it up i'm i actually i've absolutely no idea what time we're at because we had technical difficulties right at the beginning <laughs> of the podcast typical shy talk you know yourself but um you love I wanna, to see it you love to see it Absolutely. I want to give a massive thanks to David for coming on. Um, you can check out all the well, all two podcasts that he's involved in. I'll leave the links to both of them in the description down below. I'm sure we will more than likely, absolutely, definitely have him on definitely. again. Um, we'll have, we're going to have him on for a Goal Recreations episode as well, post-COVID and all that's, that as well. That, that's the day that Grievich gets fully put to shame, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Um, also, thanks again to... Uh, Jack again congratulations on 100 subscribers by the way cheers um, mate cheers thank you very much last call <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah we'll wrap it up there lads leave a like if you enjoyed and uh, subscribe if you haven't already thank you for watching or listening and we'll see you next time good luck good luck